Well, we made it to Wisconsin. There's a little bit of snow on the ground and we're not in the ditch. So that's a big plus. We've got some winter driving tips and some information about how you could avoid the snow coming up right after this. Hi everybody, I'm Judy. And I'm Jim, and welcome to It's a Highway Vlog, where you can travel the whole country with us and you don't even have to get out of your snowplow. So, while you're just trucking along, pushing that snow, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Nothing. Hey, good afternoon everybody. We are at the TA in Janesville, Wisconsin. Um, looks like we're here for at least tonight. We do have a load for Monday, um, but it's a ways away. We have to deadhead. Um, we unloaded here this morning. It's really cold outside. And we did see some of the white stuff, we but saw. it was on the ground. We didn't see it driving. Yeah, we avoided that yesterday, and that's uh, sort of the point of why we're making this video. We talked yesterday about going out of our way to avoid the snow and all that fun stuff. Uh, so we thought we would actually, we got a decent response to that, and we're going to talk a little bit more today about some other things, uh, share some other tips that we have and some tools that we use to actually plan out our route. Yep. And, uh, oh. A few people who've watched the video also brought up some other things, and so we thought we'd add some of those in today, too. So that's what you're going to get. Yeah, so one of the things yesterday we were talking about was uh, we were on our way from Pennsylvania up here to Wisconsin, and uh, the route that they had us taking, um, I can say it now, we were picking up around Allentown, and we were delivering up around Madison, Wisconsin this morning. Well, the, the route that they wanted us to take would have taken us up to Interstate 80 and across 80 uh, through Pennsylvania and then into Ohio. And by looking at the weather map and everything, it looked like it was going to snow. And frankly, I don't think neither me nor Judy is quite ready to be driving in the snow. Um, so we decided we would go an alternate route. Um, and, and in this case, wound up costing more in mileage and more in tolls. It was probably 35 40 miles longer but we ran on the pennsylvania turnpike instead of going across 80 it's very and painful we all know how painful that is yeah because it's not only driving but money wise money wise <laughs> yeah it was a pain so but i am one that will try to avoid snow any way i can and uh, the sad part about that is judy and i grew up in ohio and we were pretty used to driving in snow, her more than me. Actually, I, I like to play in the snow when I'm at home in yes. my vehicles. I mean, we, we work for school, we already shared that with you, and we uh, had the privilege of calling school on or off or whatever, so I I like to go out and see what the roads were like. That was enjoyment to me, and you know, and we lived on a back road, so we, we got out the, yeah, and it wasn't the, four-wheel drive pickup truck it was usually one of our cars that right. <laughs> I would go out and play in but 
we try to avoid snow at all costs in this truck and it's not because Judy and I worry about our driving we pretty much know how to drive on snow uh, secret slow down um, and stay away from other people as much as you can as stay much away as you from can. other vehicles um, as much as you can put yourself away from everybody but the thing is when you're on the road with and it's snowing you're sort of at the mercy of everyone else um, and so I try to stay out of the snow it, it's like I said it's not us it's the other folks that are out there driving because you always have cars and people in four-wheel drive trucks think that they can drive 100 miles an hour in the snow and that's just not true um, and of course you always have some people in commercial vehicles that truthfully just don't have common sense in the snow um, I mean, oh I do have a funny story okay that I don't think I told you about <laughs> my cousin from Michigan stopped by down um, while we were at home and uh, she was talking about how they went on um, a vacation down in Tennessee and that they were driving you know down a road and they actually got pulled over by a state patrolman who told them don't you know that you know we're under a state of emergency you're not supposed to be out on the roads <laughs> and if if you know anything about the southern states they will close down things at, you know... Yeah, Atlanta shuts down for two inches of snow. Yeah, well, and I think Tennessee might have had an inch or two or whatever. And, um, and the funny part about it was is they had a Michigan license plate that was covered in snow. So the state patrolman couldn't see where they were from. And she, she looked at him and said, you know, I'm sorry, officer, we didn't realize that. And uh, we're from Michigan. And, she, and he said, oh go on <laughs> go ahead <laughs> because obviously people from different states know how to drive differently you right know? and and we know there are a lot of folks that are in these trucks that are from southern states are not really used to driving in the snow and we've got friends that just absolutely will not come into the northern states in the winter time because they're terrified of it uh which rightly so if you've never driven in it it can be very scary um it's just you know, you have to take your time and you have to slow down and you have to watch out for other people. Um, the interesting thing, um, we had, a, yesterday there was a viewer that asked about uh, uh, Ryan Bruzon, and I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Ryan, uh, but uh, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, but he had a question about weather road conditions and vehicle weights. And um, one of the things that I did was I, I just sort of sat down and, and because to us, our experience, this truck, a single axle, it handles pretty well. Handles pretty well in the snow. Um, we've never really been in a situation, maybe more than once or twice, where the truck sort of slipped around a little bit. For the most part, it just, you know, it, it does well. We keep the tires. Don't let the tires get worn out. I mean, we've got decent tires on here now. I just put back on in the spring, but. Um, I got to looking at, at tires and everything. Um, you know, it's interesting. Our truck weighs 29,500 pounds when it's empty. That's empty, folks. That's empty. empty. Um, <laughs> yes, we have a lot of junk. And we have a lot of junk. Um, <laughs> and a reefer. But the most I can weigh is 33,000 pounds when we're loaded. So if we're completely full, you know, I put 3,500 pounds on here and, and we're, you know, we're completely at the limit, 33,000 pounds. Um, the folks that are driving the D trucks that have the dual axles on them, you know, their trucks usually weigh a little bit more than our truck empty, maybe 30, 31,000, uh, partially because they have the extra axle. And then, uh, but their loaded weight can go up, you know, to maybe 30, 44, 45,000 pounds. Um, but then you get the folks in the tractor and trailers who, you know, the tractor and trailer may weigh 35, 34, when it's empty and then you know they go up to 80,000 pounds well what's interesting is when you start looking at the weight that you've got on the tires and do you do physics lessons coming <laughs> well something like that um the more weight you've got on your tire the better it adheres to the road I guess you have better traction you know there's more weight on that individual tire and what's amazing you know when I'm empty I've got six wheels on the ground and each one of those wheels is 4,916 pounds. Compare that to a tractor and trailer, when they're empty, he's only got 1,944 pounds per tire on the road. That's a huge difference. And even when we're loaded, 
A tractor and trailer's got 4,400 pounds on their truck on each tire. Uh, a dual axle straight truck, if all the tires are on the road, you know, if the tag axle's down or or they're a twin screw, it's got 4,500 pounds per tire. When we're loaded, we've got 5,500 pounds per tire. Go us. So <laughs> our little straight truck, in some respects, would be you know expected to handle better than some of the larger vehicles just because of the amount of weight per tire we actually carry on the ground at all times. And unlike the big uh, e-trucks, the tractor and trailers, we don't bend in the middle. So, you know, we're, we're not likely to meet our rear end coming around one side because we've lost traction on the back end. So, you know, anybody that's out here for the first time in one of these straight trucks, they really don't handle that bad in the snow. Um, it's very similar to driving your car, you know, if you if you're rear end starts to slide out to one side you you know they always tell you to steer in the direction of the skid so you would turn the wheel to the right a little bit don't yeah, overcorrect I, I, I always tell Jim I said I've been doing it for so long started out with rear wheel drive cars when I was younger yeah up until the front wheel drive so you know you, you get so used to doing it I don't know how to tell people to do it it's just one of those things where you you kind of feel it out and I'm more of a look ahead of me and try to find a dry spot in the road right. or uh you know something that's got some stones in it or something or just a worn spot where where the drivers to get some traction you know and that's sometimes where yeah. i go but if you're sliding that's a different story you know you can't always get the car, the truck to go where yeah, you want we'll, it to go but it's it, you just have to pay attention you have to watch out in front of you pay attention to what the other drivers are doing you know obviously if there's 15 cars in the ditch you probably want to slow down well maybe a mile back uh you know and just be careful um we you know, we ran into conditions this last winter out in wyoming there's one piece of advice don't go through wyoming in the winter time anytime between <laughs> actually March, wyoming just anytime you always have to look at the wind uh, out there too <laughs> but uh yeah i-80 through wyoming is is an adventure at times um it can be it took us an entire day to get through that state yeah. i think the wind was blowing storm last year they didn't have the interstate closed but uh i don't know so anyway shall we get on that with was our, 25 mile an hour through that get on state. with our little tips and everything that we got so i think we covered some tips as far as winter driving just slow down it's simple as that <laughs> and if it gets too bad get off the highway um don't go you know, if you're not comfortable driving in the snow, then don't drive in the snow. And uh, just another tip that anybody who went to school or has been around truck drivers for a long period of time, there's a there's a phrase that they call looking for an out or finding an out. You yeah. know, as you're driving, you're taught to always look. If something happens in front of you, where can you go? That's why you're always supposed to look in your mirrors and you're always supposed to look in front. You know, you're, you're trying to see what's you're, out in front of you yeah. and and if something happens in front of you what are you going to do you know so you need to be aware of your surroundings aware of your surroundings and finding an out as in truck driver terms right the things we do is every morning when i get up eventually at the end of my shift or before i start my shift i will actually go on um, the weather channel web page just go into google and type in weekly planner maps and we'll have a link below to these there'll just be a link down to the page we go to and what that does it, it'll bring up the forecast of precipitation for the next week um and it's you know it is what it is uh, obviously it's weather it's so. weather so it's going to change but i have it in my head um uh, when we're looking for loads for the upcoming week you know if there's a blizzard in wyoming I'm probably not going to take a load that's going through Wyoming. So, you know, I, I know and I'm aware of the weather for the upcoming week. Uh, that gives me a real simple tool just to go look at. I look at it every day because the maps change, but they're always a week out. Yeah, so, like with those hurricanes that, you know, ship from, you know, blizzard conditions and snow and stuff do the exact right. same thing. Right. Know? So, it, I mean, we always take a look at that. They've got the severe weather on there, you know, like if. In the springtime, if it's red in Oklahoma, which isn't it always, um, we don't go there. Or we try not to. We try our best. Or just plan your days, you know, because we, we even say if there's a snowstorm, you know, in Wisconsin tomorrow, you know, 
by Sunday or Monday, it's fine up here. Yeah. You know? Which, by the way, there is a snowstorm coming, and we're leaving. Uh, <laughs> there is a snowstorm coming? It's supposed to snow Sunday. Oh, it's supposed to snow. Not storm. Just snow. Yeah. Two flakes. More than one flake <laughs> is a storm. It depends. Um, it depends on where you are in the country. Snowstorms are big. But I use that. And, of course, we have our smartphones with us all the time. Um, and so... When I stop or when I get up in the morning, I'll, there's a couple of, well, there's actually three or four apps that I use on my phone. Uh, again, the Weather Channel app uh, to look at the radar on there. Their radar is pretty accurate and, and keeps up to date. The one feature I really love about it is they have part of their radar where you can go in and it'll show you the future 48 hour snowfall forecast. And it will actually run like a little animation to show you where it's going to be snowing. And so that, I have found, is actually quite accurate. Um, you know, it's only two days out, and so it, it will show you the snowfall depth and what time it's going to be, and that helps, you know, us get around stuff. I mean, I can't get around snow all winter long because we do have to make money. <laughs> yeah, you'd be avoiding most of the country. Yeah, but, snowstorms. but I try the best to stay away from it. If I don't have to go into a snowstorm, I'm not going to. Yeah, well, and being out here, as long as we have, we, we do know which states do uh, have a better cleanup job right right <laughs> have more snowplow availability or they have more you know they right. they put and it's interesting they put different things on the road up here as they do down you know and um even in ohio and then they put different stuff out in colorado than what they put out here yeah. you know colorado puts you know sand well it's black it turns it's the truck turns black truck black yeah i yeah. know oh, the other tip is you wash your truck a lot more in the winter time yeah. than you do in the other times. Um, but some of the other apps are the Weather Underground app. Um, AccuWeather has a decent app. Um, it's just sort of a personal preference thing. For me, the Weather Channel works for me. The other thing about winter driving that you usually don't experience too much in the summer is the wind. And for whatever Except reason, for Wyoming. <laughs> well, Wyoming's ninety-nine percent of the time it's windy. But I, you know, my theory is the leaves go off the trees and then the wind just blows through. But the winds in the weather, it, winter time, can be really, really nasty. And all these apps I've talked about, um, there's a an app, there's a portion of the radar where you can go in and look at the wind speed. And I do that all the time. I hate driving in wind. It's wind my very least favorite thing about this job is driving in wind and that has to do with the weight of the truck too and and when we it's get, windy out you want to be fully loaded back here yeah and we get blown over uh, around every which way pretty bad in this truck because we've only got the, the four rear drive tires on on the back end if we had were a d truck we'd have eight back there so a little bit more stability from side to side and one of the things that four wheelers don't realize is that the aerodynamics of their car and our truck don't mix they they affect pushing and pulling us just as much as they feel we're pushing and pulling them i mean you know there are times where uh one of the crossover vehicles or whatever they just don't have very very good aerodynamics and they like shove us over right and you know a tractor trailer going by me doesn't bother me a bit <laughs> but the little car does but you have that anytime yeah i'm talking about winter wind. weather yeah the wind in the winter um but just be aware of that because it can be nasty um but like i said i always look at my apps to, to at least get an idea what i'm driving into maybe i shouldn't maybe i should just now here's the other thing he looks at his apps i look at my app my weather app for one particular thing how much clothing do i need to put on and that's why i look at it you know if it's snowing outside i, I can obviously see it's snowing outside <laughs> if there's snow clouds in the air you know i can see it but that's it he, rightly so as a team you know at least one of you should be concerned about the weather that's me <laughs> Concerned about the weather because I'll have to drive in it, and, and I drive in, and he drives more at night, which is you know darker weather. That's that's a little right. bit more nerve wracking. You know, during the day, the weather doesn't near bother me near as well, much as it does at night. Generally, the temperatures are colder at night. Uh, stuff that is unfroze during the day, where the roads will thaw, will freeze back at night a lot of times. So it's I nice. have to be a little bit more careful with where I'm driving, and and of course you can't see much at night. Uh, and then, uh, you know, 
it's just I don't know you get used to it I guess it's the only thing I can say and as you can see there's a lot of winter things yeah because I as we're talking I'm even thinking about other things that we don't even have listed on here yeah. yet again. um and one of the other things we look at a lot is most of the states now I think probably all of them uh, you know, you can get the road forecast and the, and the road conditions, and some states even have webcams, uh, but it's usually one of the uh, the road information systems. I usually just go to Google and type in, like, Wyoming road conditions, and it'll bring up the state uh, Department of Transportation's website. They vary from state to state. Colorado has a really good one, and it will show you all the closings and everything else. Wyoming's Whether or not chain laws are in effect. Chain laws are in effect, especially out west, because we do have to deal with chain laws uh, through the mountainous states, California, Colorado, Oregon, Washington. Wyoming. Wyoming really doesn't, you know, they have chain, chain places. Utah, uh, Nevada. Yeah, there are places that you wouldn't think that are chain. Yeah, um, but, you know, they, those apps will, will give you a heads up. Um, I'll try to link all those below in the description to all the western states at least the eastern states you know not so much there's as far as i'm aware of there are no chain laws east of the mississippi uh that could be wrong but uh you know we really just don't have the mountainous conditions like they do well, out some west some of the west virginia mountains are pretty steep. yeah west virginia probably should have chain laws in effect <laughs> just, it's like, all the time <laughs> um they just but, don't go down very long <laughs> but uh <laughs> keep your truck washed can I add a truck wash thing to that too? Also realize when you're getting your truck washed in the winter time that things freeze. Right. So you know, make like sure your, your locks on your, your doors. Your locks on your on your doors to get into the truck. Right. We've had Not that just happen. your padlock in the back, but your truck doors. You know, will lock. I know. Or will freeze. One one of our driver friends uh, has one of those little pocket torches. You know the little butane fired pocket torches and he's had to use it before to open up the locks on the doors fortunately for us we we did it one time and it actually uh, yeah it was it was a mess we had to wait for the sun to warm our truck up i was gonna say what did we do so i didn't even remember it happening <laughs> so we probably just went into the truck stop and just sat there we sat and we waited. just waited for it to to warm up but so, just just realize that you might want to do that in the middle of the day and not early in the morning or late at night you know and where it's the coldest time to temperature when the sun's bright and shining right uh we did have a couple other things we want to talk about yesterday thank you for sticking around this long and listening to us blather on yeah uh almost incoherently <laughs> get yourself a good pair of fueling gloves warm good pair of fueling gloves these are insulated we found these at walmart i wish I think they probably sell these uh, online. I'll put a link below. An Amazon say. link. Uh, if you click it, you know, you help support us just a little bit. Uh, these are actually white, uh, white mule. Yeah, and uh, not all the Walmarts have them because we've looked places. We've looked at Lowe's. We've looked at other places and can't find them. So these yeah. are insulated and they're nitrile coated. You have to get nitrile coated get gloves. The other crap stuff. If you get latex coated gloves, diesel fuel eats latex like it's its lunch. Uh, nitrile, it will not eat. So we have looked and looked and looked. We had a pair of these gloves three or four years ago. We never could find them. And we just happened to stumble upon them at a Walmart in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> of all places. Of all places. <laughs> and we bought two pair. I'm sort of wishing we could get back there and buy another two pair. Uh, these are really awesome for the winter. Because it gets cold outside when you're putting fuel in the truck at 10 below zero like I yeah, was last pumps, year. Yeah, those pumps, those metal pumps are really cold. Um, and speaking of fuel, great segue, huh? Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of fuel, right in there. I know one of the, the things that people are really just not, you know, coming out of a car or something that we've never driven a commercial vehicle, you know, these trucks run on diesel fuel. And diesel fuel is different than gasoline because it will gel up in the wintertime. Um, Judy and I have had this truck for almost five years. This will be our going into our sixth winter in this truck. I've only ever put anti gel in this truck twice, and that's because it was going to be 20 below zero. Yeah. Um, Up in we, or something. In the wintertime, we exclusively fuel at TAs and Petros. I have never had an issue, yeah. knock on wood, with their fuel gelling up on me in the wintertime. Um, and so we just use their fuel. 
the one thing you do have to be very careful about is if you've got a load coming from the south, like if you've picked up in Florida or Georgia, they don't treat their fuel down there. Uh, there's actually a map you can find online that shows where TA and Pepo, Petro's, when they treat their fuel. Like right now, if you go and get fuel, you'll see there's a little tag on the pump on the fuel line that says, you know, treated from November to March. Um, we've never had a problem with it, and I don't put antigel in the truck. It's not recommended by the uh, Detroit the engine manufacturer, so we just don't do that. Uh, other than, you know, extreme cases, because the, the TA fuel is supposedly guaranteed down to 10 below zero, I believe. Um, and so, like, we've never had a problem. I don't want to have a problem. Um, but be real careful about coming, you know, your fuel, if you're in the south in the wintertime and you're coming north, you know, make sure that you don't completely fill your truck up in the south because you're going to want to get treated diesel fuel in there as soon as you can. Uh, we drove fleet owner trucks beforehand and we did put HALS anti-gel in the truck. They were older trucks. They were older trucks. Um, and I have put that in this truck twice. That's what I used, HALS. Uh, there's also a product called Rescue 911. It's a little red can, supposedly never had to use it, but if your fuel lines do get filled or get uh, gelled up, you can pour a bottle or two of that in your tanks and it will at least get you to where you can get your fuel filters changed. Um, but we've never experienced that, knock on wood, and hopefully we don't. Of course, with this winter, who knows? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what this winter is going to bring. Sort of crazy. Uh, just. You know, be careful when you know you're where you're buying your fuel at. Um, anything else? No, just you know. Um, sometimes in the winter, you got to let Jesus take the wheel <laughs> <laughs> because there, are, you know, uh, and there are times when you might start sliding or somebody might be starting to slide with you, and you just, you know, what gets you through it is just simple prayer, and you know. Jesus is right there steering that wheel for you sometimes. And sometimes that's all you got. <laughs> Pay attention. Slow down. It'll be okay. But just don't go in it unless you have to. There you go. Good advice. If you're not asleep by now, please hit the subscribe <laughs> button and like our videos. And we will see you in the next video. And hopefully with maybe a different topic other than that white stuff. Yeah going to Florida. <laughs> Stay warm, everybody.